Now, in this session, we are joined by Iraj Ispahani, the Chief Executive Officer of Ispahani Advisory Limited, based in London. Ispahani Advisory advises family businesses on strategy, governance, people and education. And in this session, we'll be in conversation with Iraj about a recently launched book. It's titled Family Business and Responsible Wealth Ownership, Preparing the Next Generation. In the book, an international group of experts with decades of practical experience working with wealth-earning families around the world bring together the perspectives of the lived experience of business-owning families and the advisory world. They examine, among other key topics, finding and deploying your purpose, effective mentorship for the next generation, resolving intergenerational conflicts, navigating social media, and creating the next generation of entrepreneurs. The book is an essential read for all generations involved in family businesses and wealth ownership because the rising next generations are the future of these families and should be better understood and supported so that family human capital is not wasted or overlooked. It's also an invaluable guide for those who advise families from a professional services or wealth management perspective. Hello everyone, I'm Iraj Ispahani. Over the past year, all generations have experienced increased anxiety and become more aware of their mortality. The ensuing conversations within families about their health and wealth have become more explicit. How can the next generations make sense of a world facing upheaval on a scale not seen since World War II? What do they really need to know? Family business and responsible wealth ownership Preparing the Next Generation aims to develop a shared mindset and a better understanding between generations, focusing in particular on matters from the perspective of the next generation to enable them to help themselves lead meaningful lives. Family businesses and wealth owners must contend with many challenges today, including increased government interventionism, business disruption, technology-driven change, international conflicts, and the climate crisis. The pandemic also has underscored the need for all businesses to apply more sustainable practices, and a few forward-looking family businesses are indeed embracing circularity. Circularity means avoiding waste, not just of natural resources, but also the human resources within families, including family members who are not directly involved in the family business, but who have a stake in the future and, and who actually need to support those in more active roles. In addition, the move in recent years to a greater transparency of midshore and onshore jurisdictions and the disclosure in, enabled by the Common Reporting Standard have increased the scrutiny of wealth owners by governments, tax authorities, regulators and indeed the media. All of these changes further complicate the process of creating, retaining and transitioning wealth. They also underline the increasing need for dialogue between wealth and business owners who are so important to economies around the world and governments and other stakeholders. Families must, in parallel, address their internal issues, which can become greater derailers than the many challenges of the external environment. Families must ensure that they themselves are sustainable. Family continuity can be undermined, as we know, without adequate preparation and careful preparation for succession. In thinking about the content of this book, I focused on the aspects of this preparation that the next generation, in my view, particularly needs. Finding one's purpose, developing resilience, the benefits of mentoring, importantly, preparing women for wealth, social media use and reputation management, understanding asset protection structures, encouraging entrepreneurship and understanding the purpose of capital. They are all, in my experience, relevant to the rising next generations in their formative years and indeed later. Families do need advisors, but it is the families themselves that need to understand their own structures 
and importantly, the checks and balances required. Second, I thought the tone was important too, not prescriptive or hierarchical, but open and supportive. The next generations are too often told what to do, which can be off-putting, frankly. My intention with this book is to take a practical approach that encourages the next generation to listen, learn and act as needed, to make the choices that are right for them, to take responsibility for their futures by engaging with their family's expectations. The next generation is the future of those families and should be better understood and supported so that family human capital is not taken for granted, wasted or sometimes just overlooked. This, in my experience, happens rather too often and is best avoided. It is also important to develop clear roles for family elders whose experience can help in mentoring the younger generations. Third, I wanted to bring together leading experts from around the world with decades of practical experience working across cultures with wealth-earning families on an intergenerational basis, together with the perspectives of the lived experience of business-earning families. In my opening chapter in the book on finding and deploying purpose, I observe how the pandemic has challenged modi operandi around the world, including the ways that nations function, the relationships between business, government and civil society, and our attitudes today about what we value in society. Some people will continue much as before, but many, particularly in the next generations of business and wealth earning families, women and men in their 20s, 30s and 40s, will be determined to be heard more clearly and feel a greater sense of urgency to make a contribution to society. These individuals are, of course, just a small subset of a much wider rising next generation global cohort, but they represent an influential and privileged subset with access to the levers to drive and deliver change for the wider benefit and inclusion of the many. As we think about the need to adapt our society via a new social contract, this is an opportunity to shape the future with purpose. The other themes I cover in this chapter and are echoed through the book by my co-authors are climate, conflict and community, the path to finding one's purpose and the I and the we. I hope you find it a worthwhile read. And thank you. Iraj. Hey,